clerk, when you're ready, do a roll call, please. Uh, yes. When you are ready. Almost ready. Okay, the meeting of the City Council, October 28th, 7 p.m. Um, Councilor Capone. Here. Councilor DeFlorio. Councilor DePiro. Here. Councilor Hanlon. Here. Councilor Marchese. Here. Councilor Matuski. Here. Councilor McKinnon. Here. Councilor McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Napolitano. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, Councilor Simonelli. Here. And President Delasola. Here. Ten members present. We do have a quorum. Mr. President. Please stand and salute the flag. Just on a side note, Councillor uh, Napolitano is unable to make it for a family commitment. Can we play, stand for Councillor Hanlon? We yes. stand for a moment of silence. Former Councillor Sandra Colarusa's dad passed away, Angelo Colarusa. Oh. President, I make a motion to accept the previous minutes meetings. Second, motion. Second. First. Meetings minutes, I should say. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, yep, before we do anything, we have to open um, public participation. So moved. Yes. Uh, public participation will go before public hearings, and then we'll take the public hearings immediately. That's how we've been doing it. Am I wrong? Council Capone, is that how we've been doing it? No. I think we do it in the public hearing. First? Okay. Public That's fine. Public first, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's how we do it. So motion will be to uh, open the 10 public open, hearings. Open uh, 10 pieces, 1 through 10 for uh, public hearing. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Yeah, it's all So, good. no. In a second. We have a yeah, they needed to be redone. There was an issue. Okay. Um, so, did you take items one through ten collectively? We yes. did. That, that what yes. I heard? Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. President, items one through ten are public hearings offered by um, Extinet LLC. Please note that all ten of these have been done in the in, uh, previously. Uh, the reason they're back on the agenda is because there was just an issue with the green slips uh, that were mailed out, um, so we have to redo them. So we, re re we had to republish it uh, uh, for the, the certified mail. So we had to redo it, so the public these public hearings have to be redone. Oh, That's okay. all. These ones that we already did, but we have to redo them. So I just right. want to let you know before we begin. Item number one, Mr. President, is a petition. Uh, they're all petitions offered by Exonet LLC for permission to attach a small cell antenna along and all required equipment and fiber for its operation to an existing utility pole in the right-of-way located on the public way or ways. Item 1 is for 141 Chelsea Street. Item 2 is for 301 Main Street. Item 3 is for 132 Union Street. Item 4 is for 45 Ferry Street. Item 5 is for 180 Ferry Street. Item 6 is for 275 Ferry Street. Item 7 is for 493 Ferry Street. Item 8 is for 431 Broadway. Item 9 is for 537 Broadway. And item 10 is for 642 Broadway. Public hearing. Second motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Yeah, we have to take these separately, Mr. Chairman. We have to take each one separately. We do one at a time or collectively? Okay. I know we did them collectively last time. I don't think it breaks a rule. Um, so I, I, if you'd like to do it, uh, I, I would say that if people are here to speak on it, just to explain which petition, because they may live it in one area, so that you, if we so choose, we can split the vote later. Make a motion to take them collectively, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. All in favor, take collectively. I have it. All right. So, um, Mr. Chairman, you're going to um, open the public hearing if you're not going to have the petitioner before you. I don't know uh, what's the pleasure of the board. Is there any petitioners in the audience? Uh, yep, she, uh, Ms. Uh, Franti is here. Um, 
Right. So uh, if you'd like to open them since we've had these already before us. Yeah. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Whereas this has already been before us and it's really for the benefit of the public, I would just uh, stick with the public uh, hearing portion of it. And once we close it, we could always have the petitioner back up and discuss it from there. Uh, thank you. So there was a motion to open it. Was there a second? There was a second, and it was okay. All in favor. Uh, so um, it's before you, Mr. President. So you have to go. Yeah, amazing. Right. We're going to do them all ten as one. So all. Right. Eight from one through ten. Yep. These are for all ten. We're doing them all collectively. They uh, the counselors. Okay. Oh, it's in my pocket. I didn't. Oh. <laughs> so, um, all of, you may make a motion on taking collectively. We did. Okay. Yep. So, no. Now, now it's just the uh, three times in favor, three times opposed. Please. I'm going to ask three three times in favor of one through ten petition. Anybody in favor of this petition? Anybody in favor? Anybody in favor? That part is closed. Anybody opposed? Anybody opposed on this first 10 pieces on the agenda? Anybody opposed? Nobody's opposed? Closed public hearing. That part is closed. Second. Council McLaughlin. Mr. Chairman, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Can, uh, to you, to the city clerk, can you City clerk, what was, you had to go out to re-advertise for these because of? There was, there was just uh, an issue, though. The company actually advertised them. They paid for all the advertising, not the city. Okay. We do not pick up that tab. So they, they had an, uh, someone leave the company <laughs> midway they were doing it the last time, and they didn't get us all the receipts in time. Okay. So we just had to republish it. Oh, that's, that's all. It was okay. all sent out correctly. I have all the receipts right yeah, no, here. I have no problem with it. I was just wondering what the reason was. And that was you, why. You didn't hear back from any resident regarding any of None. this, correct? Uh, I had one call uh, from someone that I know uh, from a property just requesting some information, uh, and they got the information I gave them, and they were satisfied. Perfect. That's the only person. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. You're welcome. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, through you to our clerk. Uh, if you could, from a logistical mm -hmm. situation, where are we at for a time frame? What can we do? What can't we do? I know there was some we, discussion we, about time frame. These, voting, these 10 need to be done this evening. The okay. other 12 came on two weeks ago. So, so we, you, have, a we have a 60 day window. The only way okay. to extend that 60 day window is with permission of the uh, petitioner of the company. Okay. Um, so that's that's under FCC rules. Okay. And so what we have is um, we have some of the uh, the facility rules and regulations, some changes Correct. that were made, etc. And the company there, has them all. Yeah. Okay. Good. So they've seen those. Um, there was uh, in a packet that we received before. There was a uh, an agreement between the city an and MOU. the company. I think that they drafted that. They drafted that. So we were still having outside counsel uh, okay. look at that. I mean, uh, so where do we? How far do we get on our that? Our solicitors out there. Anyone? I know. I know. We've reviewed it. I've okay. had a phone call with our solicitor and okay. KP Law just this week. Um, they were reviewing it. They went through any. You'll see a few changes in our ordinance yeah, that, that were done through okay. KP Law um, and our solicitor's office. Because uh, it had to okay. go within the FCC right. rules, and the same thing with our policy. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Very Clark. Mr. President. Council we can please have our city solicitor before us. Good evening, Colleen Mejia, city solicitor. Council Capone. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Madam Solicitor. Good evening. Uh, as far as the paperwork, I saw some, some paperwork on Division Three, the um, facility rules and regulations. The original contract, I think, that was provided by Extinet themselves. Yes. Ha has, um, have we gone through that at all? Has everything been done with that? I actually, late this afternoon, got an email from um, Katie um, Lofman from KP Law with some um, comments. And um, I, I just got back into my office at 6.30. Okay. So I wasn't able to review it. This would be my recommendation because I saw some of these. I'm sure you're going to want some more time to look at this. I know we're kind of in a, in a crunch period where we need to act. But if the petitioner is willing to grant this additional time to our next meeting, give you an opportunity to take a look at what the comments were, is that something that you would? You Absolutely. Would, yeah, that, I, I would figure that would be beneficial. Sure. Um, so I don't have any other questions for our solicitor. I do for the petitioner. So I don't know if any of my other colleagues have questions any questions no yeah, mr chairman oh, council Hanlon. <clears throat> i'm looking at our calendar and then under uh unfinished business i see several more of these items uh will this in effect 
will this affect you in any way at all that these additional items are on the calendar those are um, th the deadline for those um, hasn't passed yet because right. I think those are relatively recent um, so there's still time for those okay. Okay. <clears throat> No more if questions. No other questions. Excuse me. No more thanks. questions. Thank you. Council Capone. Uh, Mr. Uh, President, could we have a representative from the petitioner before us, please? Sure. Just is that just make sure your mic is on. Thank you. All right, good evening. Uh, Rosanna Ferranti here on behalf of Extinet. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Through to our guests, good evening. Good Thank evening. you for being here yet again. Uh, we appreciate it. You heard our city solicitor, that she got a contact from uh, outside council with some communications, maybe some suggestions or comments of some sort that she hasn't had a chance to review. I know I've looked over some of the stuff that I got. I, I'm told that the company has received uh, the paperwork as well. You understand that we have a time situation where we need to either act on it or if collectively we agree for additional time, we'd be able to do that. Given the fact that there is still some information out there and I still have some questions about some of the language, would you be agreeable to postpone this till our next meeting? So um, the way that process works, it's called a tolling agreement. And so that would be something I would have to go back to my council and okay. to, um, to clear in terms of a time frame. Okay. Um, one suggestion I might make is maybe if the, if but for that agreement, the council would be inclined to act, you could make it conditioned on that agreement. So it, you know, so although it's approved, we still, I mean, we all know we still need the agreement. Right. So you could do it that way as well. But okay. otherwise I'd have to go back and speak to my right. council on it. What, what I would be recommending my colleagues to do, it doesn't mean I'm gonna be successful in, in my uh, suggestion, but I would suggest that we lay this, these items on the table, give you an opportunity to speak to whoever you have to speak to, ask if it would be okay to postpone the whole thing till the next meeting. Because if I have to vote on it tonight, I'm gonna vote no. But I wanna look at what the suggestions are. I wanna hear what um, the concerns might be. I have some little pieces of language I'd like to get in. I'd like to work all of that out ahead of time. So that way when we come up here, we all know what we're looking at and we can vote at that point in time? So I'm happy to go back and speak to my council, not a okay. problem. Um, I would need to go back with this date certain in terms yeah. of how okay. how much time you need. It, I, I believe it would be our next meeting, we'd be able to do this. So and what's the actual date of our next meeting? November, Tuesday, November 12th. November 12th. Well, the ones we have to vote on tonight are just one to 10. Those will be those will be lined up at the same time. Just but a, what, just what'll the end up happening, we have those other items my colleagues are asking. We have those other items that are in the pipeline, but the reality is if we get all the nuts and bolts worked out on the, these first 10, the other ones should move along smoothly. Oh, no, like yeah. I said, I just need to clear it with my Absolutely. client. Absolutely, and I understand yeah. that. So uh, I don't have any other questions, but if you could do that, I, I'd sure. appreciate so it. Sure, so eleven twelve. so the, the request on the table is to have this told until eleven twelve. Correct. Okay, I will go back and discuss with them. I, I have no other questions for the petition. I don't know if my colleagues do. Councilor McLaughlin. This is my question. Uh, maybe Councilor Capone can answer it, but what other information would come out of the other com the comments came from where council Cohen? because i apologize that i'm not without, yeah without cross debate now i'll, I'll um, council come on uh our city uh, city solicitor just said that she got some comments from outside council she hasn't had a chance to review them yet so yeah so basically uh our solicitor i think it would be wise for us to give our solicitor more time to take a look at it make sure that that she's happy with what what was offered what the comments were and go from there. So what I'm looking to do is, I'm looking to postpone it till our next meeting. By then, everything should be all resolved fully and we should be able to vote intelligently on everything. So I'm asking the petitioner if she would go and get the authorization to postpone these 10 items till our next meeting. Because otherwise, we have to vote on it one way or the other tonight. So we either have to vote up or down this evening because of the time frames. So the only way to extend it beyond that is if the petition of uh, the petitioner agrees to voluntarily extend that time for now. Otherwise, we have to vote tonight. Mr. President, on cross debate, do we need to have a vote though tonight? Uh, what if their client says doesn't agree to the extension? Well, of we can worry. We'll worry about we that. Talk that. About we just, um, I would just, in my experience, it would seem that eleven twelve is reasonable given that today is ten twenty eight. So I don't think it's an unreasonable request. So I'm not inclined to think that it would be an issue. No. No. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm okay with voting on them this evening, but I respect my colleagues' uh, uh, thoughts about uh, tabling it for one more meeting where our city solicitor just came up and said that there was some new additional comments that came out today. Um, I know that I have enough information to vote on these tonight, but if the wish is the uh, city solicitor thinks that we should look at those comments, then I will um, support tabling this for two more weeks at that point. But either way, I'm, I'm okay with voting on it. Okay. Council Hanlon and Council Florio. No, I'm, I'm not on that debate. I want to make that, that debate as well. Oh, okay. Costa Florida. I just want to make sure that we're going to get that answer tonight. Because uh, if, if we leave and we don't have that answer, we're going to default. Is that correct? So I want to make, I want an understanding that, that the hope is we get that answer tonight. Not based on what, what uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Ferranti. Ms. Ferranti is fine. It's right, is in front of us. <laughs> saying that so we have to have a, an answer because we don't want to default before the meeting is over if we don't get that answer then we vote on it and we give it with the condition that the city solicitor comes back to, if there's anything there that doesn't belong there we take our vote back or something well so what's we have on to protect the, so, ourselves so just for clarity so the comments that have and and um, the city solicitor can correct me if I'm wrong but it's related to the attachment agreement so it's related to the agreement between Exonet and the city is that that's correct? So that's what's on the table. So those are those are the comments. So it's the legal comments back and forth on the agreement. So but we, but we before we vote on anything, we still have to know what that agreement is. We can't just uh, vote on something that we don't know what the agreement is. Correct. So my my dilemma is that I'm not legal counsel for Extinet. Right. Correct. And this is not just a it's okay to pat it's a tolling agreement so it's an it's an actual document that needs to be entered into so i can during the meeting i can go and see if i can make some phone calls I but um, we, so I that is why I, that. I can't commit to it right here no you know, because if you're not going to commit to it this has to be voted by the end of the night if not we, we default and we lose right now we can vote no and we consider it in two weeks uh, we, we, we consider it in a couple of days. We'll vote no on it. If, she, if we don't get an answer, we vote no, and then we'll reconsider it in 48 hours, and we'll come in front of us in two weeks. Well, that, that, that'll be your, your opinion. So no, I'm just saying it's an correct. opinion. But so I, like I said, so, I'm so happy chair, to you're make the get phone the calls. I'm happy to make the phone calls. All right, calls. All right. We're, we're let's do this. Little, uh, <laughs> make a couple of phone calls, okay. come back with the information, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Excuse customer Co thanks. One more. One more. Else. Councilor Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ms. Ferranti, uh, there was two residents that were yes. here. You've got their name yep. and address. And you. I gave them the information they asked for. Oh, that was good. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. If there's no more questions, Excuse thank you right, to our guests. Thank you. Mr. President, I'd you like all, to. All set. Are you sure? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Capone. I'd like to lay items 1 to 10 on the table. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it laid over. Um, so. Participation. Thank you. Yeah, we have to do that first. Yeah. All in favor, open it. Ayes have it. Uh, Mr. President, we only have one person on the sign in sheet. Oh. Okay. So, um, item, uh, the only person on the, on the agenda is uh, Ms. Rebecca Lee uh, from Montreux Street. Just please state your name and just press the button on the microphone there to go on. Thank you. Okay, just, just state your name and then I'll have a comment before you speak. Hi, my name is Rebecca Lee, uh, 50 Montreux Street, and I'm here to make a comment. Okay, before, excuse me, just before you start, mm -hmm. just a little ground rules. Uh, as the council, we cannot respond to any of anything you say. And also, whatever it is, you can't mention a council's name or anybody in office name, first or last name. Okay, Doc. All right, thank you. Yep. Um, and no, obviously, no personal attacks. Oh, also. certainly. Okay. Oh, certainly, I never Are do you, that. Um, I'm very <clears throat> disturbed by something that occurred. It was either late like the last week in July or early August um, by a um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this but the um, council member for Ward 6 
Um, it was very disturbing. And when I get a rock in my belly, I get very mad. And the more I thought about it, the more I said, you know something, this is just wrong. This white pickup truck pulls up with GTA on the side. The guy's in the truck all by himself. He comes out of the truck, starts charging across the street because he parked in the middle of the road. He comes charging across the street and he starts screaming at us. Now my boyfriend and I were sitting on the porch. It was like a nice summer evening, you know, and we're just sitting there and he starts screaming at us. When he first started out, who gave authorization to put these signs in this yard? He's like really, really angry. Well, the owner of the house did. When the gentleman came by to talk to us about he's running for the city council, right? And he's really seemed like he was very polite, like he really wanted to do something good for the community, for the city. So my boyfriend says to him, go ahead, put up some signs. It's no problem, go ahead. So he puts some at the corner for the fence over here. He's got like uh, two fences. We call him 50 Alfred and uh, no, 50 Montrose and 42 Alfred. So he's got the two signs over there. It's nice. So when um, the gentleman came by and uh, when he's screaming at us. I looked at my boyfriend and I said, what the heck is going on? And he said, I don't know, maybe that's normal. I said, I don't think that's normal. You know, women couldn't always vote. Under the 15th Amendment, under the Constitution, we were allowed to vote now. So I vote with my own conscience. I vote for who I want to and not for anyone who screams at me and tells me, what I can or cannot do. My boyfriend can't vote yet, but he said very clearly, I think that's what regular people do. And I said, no, I don't think so. I never seen anything like it in my life. I've been voting since I was 18 years old. I never seen anything like it. So when I read this newspaper <laughs> and I said, are you kidding me? I never begged anyone to tear down a sign okay. that we allowed them to put Excuse me, can I just interrupt? We're going over the two minutes, but we, we can't extend it as long as the board here. All in favor to extend her time up here? All opposed? So I had three opposed. All right, let's do it again. <laughs> All, all in favor. Excuse me? No, it's just two and a half minutes. I got it right here. She's allowed two minutes. Thank you. I never no, counsel. No, no she, she doesn't have If one, time. one counsel objects to the board, she has two minutes. Under our rules, it's two minutes. Hold on, we're, we're, the clerk is checking right now. Yeah, it has to be unanimous. Mr. President, just for the record, I've been up here for a few years too. There are 10 minutes for public participation. If there's five people, they get two minutes apiece. If there's one person, he can use up to, or he or she can use up to 10 minutes. If there's two people, you use five minutes apiece. It's very simple math. I Well, I have to go. I have to go by the rules that I have in front of me. And the rules say, Council Cabon. If I may, uh, just to clarify the rules for the members, unless there's unanimous consent, every individual that comes before us has two minutes. The only thing I would say is that you're talking about a very sensitive matter. You're talking about reputations. There is a piece on our agenda that's going to refer this matter to a committee, so there will be plenty of time to discuss this at length. I think it's a mistake to talk any further on this point. The point has been made. 
the concern has been has been raised the committee will address it thank you Councilman Matuski thank you mr. president uh, I just want you all to remember now two minutes is two minutes up here we're not going to break the rules if one member says no I'm going to pay attention now to this public participation we bent the rules backwards and forwards here and I, I think this woman is here to say something and she's she only spoke for four minutes Am I right, Mr. Hanlon? She spoke two and a half minutes, Councilman. Two and a half minutes. I mean, come on. If you can't extend a little courtesy. But that's okay, because what's good tonight is going to stay good. You change the rules up here every other meeting. Thank you, Councilor. It was voted not to continue it, so it's... So I'm all set? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, anybody in the audience that wants to speak on any issue could please come up now. Second a motion. Second it. All in favor? Um, I would I would like to just uh, recommend to the board to extend some courtesies to um, one our state senator and then some department heads that are here. Absolutely. Um, is there, what piece is the senator? Uh, the senator for? is here for item 34. Uh, spend rules. Take item 34. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. I have it. Take 34 on the agenda. Uh, Mr. President, item 34 is a resolution offered by Council Richard J. Delasola, Jr. as president. That Senator D. Domenico appeared to have update the uh, Everett City Council on the new funding formula for Chapter 17 that will greatly benefit the funding for Everett Public Schools. Senator, this is on Please have the Senator before us. Senator, good evening. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the committee, members of the council. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate taking me out of turn as well. I wanted to come here tonight to bring some good news to the city of Everett. I also spoke to the school committee members and to the mayor, and I thought it would be a good idea to talk to the councils as well, since you have approved the mayor's request the last several years to add money to the school budget. And I'm hoping that as a result of this bill, those days won't have to happen too often going forward. Um, First, I just want to explain the foundation budget process. And I know a lot of you know this already, but the general public might not know. First, the state puts together a, a number that the schools have to uh, use to educate all of our kids. The first step in that is making sure our local contribution is met. So the city of Everett will contribute a certain amount of money based on the wealth of the community, based on the taxes that are coming in, based on demographics, and then the difference from that number and the foundation budget number is the chapter 70 number, which is the state funding. Now, historically, this community has received a lot of funding for, from the state to offset what the city could not pay for. And the last fiscal year, we contributed in the state level about $75 million in chapter 70 money to educate our kids. And before I, I have a little presentation here that I'm gonna go through, but I wanna just give you the good news first. The good news is that $75 million is what you received this year. If we kept the current formula over a seven-year period, the number would rise to about $82 million. Not much of a difference there, over seven years. With this investment of $1.5 billion, I can't give you the exact amount, but I'm gonna tell you that we always talk about this $19 million figure that we're being shortchanged by the state. The $19 million figure is very, very conservative. When I say conservative, I mean very conservative. Without saying numbers, the city of Everett will be very, very happy going forward over the seven-year process this bill will be implemented. And how do we come about this, this, this bill? Because we've talked about this at this podium many, many times, how the state has not met the obligation for our funding. And the simple fact is this time all communities are getting a bump. In the, in the past, there'll be winners and losers. And why would a senator or representative vote for a bill that the community would lose? But now we found a way to bring $1.5 billion in real dollars. And when I say real dollars, I mean not in counting, counting inflation. So $1.5 billion in real dollars. The governor's bill proposed about $400 million, but that also did not include inflation, which meant the real dollar value was about $200 million. So the investment that we're putting in at the state level 
is going to satisfy every community across our Commonwealth, they will at least get something in return. And we did this as a joint effort, so there's always been some debate about the House and the Senate, are we going to agree on, on this language? And I can tell you that Representative McGonigal and I, as well as our representatives and senators across the board, across our entire state, are all in agreement, and more importantly, the Senate President Spoka and our Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, are on board as well. So they actually put this bill out together as a joint effort between the House and the Senate. So there's no discrepancy, there's no, you know, what side will, will do it, what side won't. We're all in agreement, we're all in alignment as well. The unions are also well, part of the process. MTA, the BTU, AFT, they've all blessed this proposal and they all want to see implemented fast because it also affects our teachers as well. We had forums across the state, we had discussions across the state, we had the Promise Act, which was one of the bills that I discussed up here that I was a co-sponsor of. We had the Tucker Bill in the House. We had the Governor's Bill, and we had other finance bills. And all those bills were put together as one. And this is how we came up with the language and all the funding for our schools. Now, there's some investments that I also want to make. So $1.5 billion in Chapter 70 aid, about $100 million in increased investments in other educational programs. 90 million of that will go for sped circuit breaker. $10 million for a century education fund grant, which the city of Everett will apply for, and they should be getting because we met the, meet the criteria for that as well. And another piece of funding here that might affect our community in the future, but not in the short term because we're not on the list yet, but the, uh, the Mass School Building Authority for our new schools funding. That has increased from $600 million to $750 million. So, and that is real dollars, real time, t taking effect the next fiscal year. So every community will also have another opportunity to get more funding for any kind of school building or repairs. And the four pieces of the bill, and not every community benefits from the four pieces, but Everett does. That's why our funding level is going to be so high. Healthcare costs, which in 1993 when we did the bill for our funding that we've been using up until now, a lot of these assumptions that were made for healthcare costs, sped, sped, special education, uh, low-income students, were way off. As time went on, the assumptions got greater and greater, and the gap got greater and greater. And we were never able to recover that or try to make up the, the difference. This bill will do that. And the, the part of the bill that I'm most excited about that affects Everett in particular is how we count our low-income students. We know that we've been shortchanged because the formula had changed about economic disadvantaged students, how we counted our, our, our kids. That change happened about three or four years ago by the government's administration. As a result, this community lost about $6 million a year from that simple change that sounded good on paper, but hurt districts like Everett and Chelsea, Holyoke, Brockton, and the city of Boston. And because of that difference, that is why you folks had to make up the difference with funding of $6.5 million one year, $6 million another year. And because of that, that short change in the, in the formula, we were able to recover that through the funding in the city. But I do want to stress, Chapter 70 never went down. There was never a cut for this community in Chapter 70. We just didn't get as much as we should have gotten with the formula change. Now with this new bill, that change will, will be gone and we'll be going back to the old formula for one year. The old formula will allow us to recoup at least six and a half million dollars the first year in the city of Everett. So you'll see a big bump in FY21 starting next, next, uh, next summer. And then going forward, there'll be a permanent fix by DESE to address this issue in a meaningful way. I have seen some of the ways they're going to address it. Every single way that they're looking at possibly implementing this, it is a positive net result for the city of Everett in a big way. So I am fully confident that no matter how DESE comes up with a fix, all the fixes that are on the table, all the, all the options, all benefit the city of Everett. So we're going to be in a, big, in a very good place there. And how long will all these changes uh, take effect? So. The 100, uh, I'm sorry, the 1.5 billion dollar uh, increase in funding will take effect over a seven-year period. So the city of Everett will see significant increases from now until 2027. At that point, it'll level off. But at that point, the 75 million dollars that you're receiving today will be well over. I don't want to give you a number, but I will say, well over 100 million dollars for this community in Chapter 70 funding, which is a big, big jump from where we're, where we're going. And also, you'll see an increase every year because we have to build up to that point. So it's not just going to happen in year 27. We have to slowly build up to it. The Senate last year put about $300 million into our budget to start the process. 
So if we keep going at $300 million, we'll be at $2.1 billion, which will account for inflation. That's why the $1.5 billion is real money, real dollars. The charter school reimbursement, which this community is also getting hurt by, we have not fully funded that at the state level, and now we will fully fund that in a in three-year period, so that will be another big increase for the city. Not Nothing to do with Chapter 70, so that will be in addition to Chapter 70. And also for the sped circuit breaker, the transportation costs, which has been hurting this community on, on, a, on trying to bus kids in and out of the city, and that will also take effect over a four-year period. So at the end of three, four, and seven years, this community is going to see millions of dollars in increased funding for our schools and double-digit increases, well into double-digit increases for our community. So you will see that beginning next year, and you will see how that, that affects our, our community. And I, I hope they can spend all this money because it's, it's going to be a windfall of, of revenue coming into this community for our kids. And they deserve it. We, we've been putting up with a lot over the last several years because we've been shortchanged with these changes that, that, looked, uh, that the, the governor put in, into effect that, that really, really negatively impacted our community. So there's one last thing I want to mention, too, because sometimes the state is accused of giving out public dollars with no accountability. Uh, there are accountability measures built into this bill that the cities have to follow. And so the districts have to develop and make public any plans for closing the opportunity gaps. And these plans are going to be tracked as well. There has to be goals and metrics, and they're going to be tracked every single year to see if we're, being, we're meeting all those goals and those metrics. And also, they're going to publish data on student preparedness in each district and high school and postgraduate success in college as well. So they're going to, we're going to see a full picture of every community, where the dollars are going, how they're being spent, how they're being managed, and what the results are going to be. Not just in our school districts, but also when our kids leave our high school and go to college, they're going to be tracked as well to make sure our kids are not just graduating and then falling off the rails at that point. And there will be a new data commission as well put into effect at the state, district, and local levels to make sure that all these strategies are being implemented and have a somewhat like a mentoring program for, for districts that they need any kind of help to meet these goals they'll be put into effect as well. So we have a lot of, a lot of happening here. It, the governor, um, it's in his hands right now. Um, the, the Senate passed it. The House passed it. We had a couple of amendments that we were a little different in each branch, but nothing that will, will derail this at all. Um, my hope is that we have this signed and in effect by Thanksgiving. And we will hopefully um, get that done, and hopefully the governor won't, um, will, will sign it. So he has some issues, I will be honest, have some issues about the funding and where it's coming from. But our commitment this year in the Senate budget and in the, the final budget shows that we have the, the revenue and, and the commitment from both branches and both leaders of both branches to make this, make this happen. Thank you, Senator. I have just two, two questions, three questions, three colleagues, Van DePiro and Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. First off, I want to begin by saying thank you, Senator. That is tremendous news, long-awaited news. Um, threw a lot at us at once, but it's, it's all great stuff. You say next year, are we talking January or, or fiscal 21? Fiscal 21. So we're looking June, July? Yeah, it'll be in next year's budget, and then it'll take effect um, in July for the, for the coming school year. So we could see a, a strong impact next school year? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's We're going to see a big increase, with, especially with that change in the language, for the economic disadvantage piece. Mm -hmm. So that will take effect right away next fiscal year. That's tremendous. That's going to allow us to make a strong investment in education in this city, also give our taxpayers some much needed relief. As you know, uh, this body has been um, very generous with supporting education over the last few years and meeting some shortfalls. And um, I would like to actually make a motion that this body unanimously sends a letter of support to Governor Baker um, if my colleagues are in agreement with that. And that's all I have. Thank you again, Senator, and thank you, colleagues on the Hill, it was long, along with Representative McGonigal. Thank you. Thank you. Council Capone, Council Matt. Thank McLaughlin. you, Mr. President. Uh, through you to our guests, I, I really, it's all wonderful news. Not a bad thing to be said out of that. And I really just wanted to publicly uh, thank and acknowledge your efforts. I know your colleagues worked very hard. I know a uh, representative worked very hard. But I know that you have worked extremely hard on this from the very beginning and have pushed it all the way through. So our community is very, very lucky to have you, and we appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council McLaughlin and Council McKinnon. Thanks, Mr. Ch uh, President. Uh, Senator, so the number will take effect for fiscal 2021? 20, uh, 
So next June, July 1st, will, this money will be implemented? We'll see the first payment to the seven-year plan. It will take effect FY21. FY21. And that's not based off of student enrollment or anything? It's a stu it's a that's a good, actually, so these numbers, obviously, going forward, are based off of enrollment, based off economic factors as well. That's why I don't want to give you an actual number. Sure. Um, but I can tell you that um, even if the economy shifts a little bit and, and enrollment goes up or down a little bit, uh, these numbers are going to be very strong forever. My, my only question to you, Senator, is I know the enrollment numbers go back from April of the previous year is, is, is the number, right, that they use when they count in students? October. October. I, I apologize. Uh, but we saw this year, the beginning of this year, we had several hundred students enroll in, in the school system throughout the course of the summer and, and, and so forth. But that wouldn't count for this school year. Those numbers will be reflected in next year. Exactly. Uh, uh, enrollment numbers correct that's right. so that's why i was just wondering what number of that so, funding will be based on, i'm sorry to interrupt no, no um, based off of yeah so you're, you're right so october 1st is when the numbers are counted for the next year um but there is a mechanism in place to if there's a, an increase in school numbers then we would do that but the, the october number more applies to the economic disadvantage piece when uh, when the governor changed the policy there and they put them on you know, they were counted only through any kind of public benefits program but a lot of our kids in our communities don't apply for that because they don't qualify for them or you have to be in the country for a certain amount of period a certain amount of time so we got hit by doing that but the October 1st date is a number that they use for that but as if enrollment increases they will absolutely take that into effect they will the budget yeah that as, as we budget in FY 21 number can ask, escalate it based on student enrollment. I mean, it's all great news, again, to echo my colleagues' comments. I mean, and you, this is one of your biggest champions have been education for our students. And again, you shine on helping our students. But I was just wondering how the enrollment plays into this and whether or not the numbers will reflect what we actually have for students in the school system. Right. I think that's one of the catch one shoes that we've been in as a community is our numbers have never been real uh, based on what state funding is equal to the number of students state fund. I think that's been one of our big problems. Yeah. But Again, just uh, to thank you and on behalf of the community for all that you do. Uh, education is uh, blessed to have you as our senator and so on. Thank you. Council McKinnon and Council Hanlon. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, to our senator, um, you've been working on this for a while, uh, a long time coming, and now it's, it's going to be here. So uh, I want to give you that anyway. Uh, as well as the representative, too. I know that both sides were actually on top of it. Right. Um, what reservation would the governor have going forward with something like this? I mean... Uh, yeah, no, he, he obviously supports public education, but he is a fiscally um, conservative guy. So he doesn't understand or doesn't see how we can afford this going forward over a seven-year period different economic conditions and different things that might happen in the future you know he's, he's not he's not saying don't do the bill he has reservations about how it's implemented and how it's funded but we are the, the legislature is the ones that appropriate the funding sure um, so in our budgets if we make a commitment to do this then our final budget for the year will reflect that so his reservation is on the long-term seven-year period the long-term seven-year period but and when, when, when we did something similar to this in 1993 and we made commitments then, we kept every commitment that we, we, we made going yeah. forward. And so that's the way it's supposed this to work. Is, this is, this <laughs> is, this is uh, you know, something that we're not going to talk about and make a big deal out of and then fizzle out in two years. This is, not, that is, this is a commitment long-term for sustainability of it's our schools. It's a long-term plan for... It's a long-term plan, yeah. but, but it's also it's, it's, it's a leg piece of legislation. Oh yeah. So, so if it's not something that we just said we're going to do tomorrow, and then we're, you know we're hoping for the best. The Senate put the money in in a very difficult year. We made the commitment. The House concurred with it in the final budget. Three hundred million dollars a year additional funding for our public school system is not going to break the Commonwealth's bank. We have a four, a forty-two point, a forty-two point five billion dollar budget in our state right now that will increase every year which means if the $300 million stays the same and our budget keeps increasing to $50 million, $51 million over a seven-year period, then the percentage of that budget goes down for education funding. But the commitment is still there. So $300 million is the magic number per year. So Not, uh, Give or take $10 million here and there. So how real, um, how real 
is this uh, being accomplished? How how real is it? How real is this going to happen? It's cool. it's ironclad. It, it, this is this is happening with him. Uh, I mean, with him with his reservation. With him signing on. Well, he has to just either sign it or not. Okay. So we, we have veto power in the Senate, in the House, to override any vetoes that he might have if sure. he does veto anything. Um, so this is definitely happening? This is happening. Okay. This is happening. This, this is the, every major outlet has heralded this as a great plan. Every, this is the first time I've ever seen a bill have the unions on board, mm -hmm. MMA on board, the superintendents on board, the school committee association. Everybody is on board, and the House and the Senate have both concurred. That this is this is a commitment that we're going to make. So, um, I have, you know, there's always reservations on every bill that's passed. Sure. In in the Senate, in the House, and the governor doesn't always agree, and we don't always agree with the governor. You know, but we work very well together with the governor. Uh, just a matter of what we think is the right thing to do with that, mo mo you know, that point in time. But we we are. This is this is happening. It's happening. Long time coming. Thank yes. you, Senator. Yeah. Thank you, Council Councilor Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, Senator, as you can imagine, we're all very happy that this is going on. And, um, and by the way, Mr. Chairman, if no one has, I'd like to second uh, Councilor uh, DePiro's motion on sending a letter to the governor. I didn't hear anybody do that, so on his motion. It is and um, I have a crazy question, but does this in any way affect school building programs in the state? School building programs? Yes. Uh, what, what, what we've done now, I mean, nothing's going to bother those, right? We can still do school building. Yeah, so th this is going to increase the funding for that. For school building. For that line, yeah. So it's at Thanks. $600 million now, yeah. and this will increase it to 750 the first year. So $750 million will be the new amount going forward. Um, so that means more communities can apply for funding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Okay, no more. Thank you. Council, thank you from for me to you for your, your efforts yeah. and yeah, your hard work. It's going to touch many families. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. And thank you for filling those, the gap those couple of years, too, for helping us with this until we got this fixed. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Council Capone? Yes. On the, uh, on the motion that's been made and seconded, it's an excellent one. I'm sure we all agree. The only thing when we have a public sentiment, we need to override our rule that refers it to legislative affairs. We need a two-thirds vote to do that. So and, that, we'll, and so. that'll be a roll call uh, okay. to just to suspend the rule, Correct. and then we'll vote yep. up or down on the on the piece. So to it's suspend, and I'll second it. Council um, Rule 18, 18. Yep. is the number. Um, uh, yes to suspend it. No to not. Council Capone. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Uh, Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor and President Delasola. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays. You have suspended Rule 18. Now you can take an up or down vote. Um, and we need a. Uh, we had a motion for favorable action, seconded by. And um, Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. And President Delasola. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays. You have um, voted favorable action to refer this to the uh, Senate and the House uh, that were in favor. Councilor Marchese. Did it also include the letter that? Uh, um, yes. I, I'll I okay. draft the letter to the House and the Senate. On Thank your you. You're welcome. Thank you, Council. Um, so uh, there are a few more um, pieces a, here. If can I we take a motion? Suspend the rule to take item. Yep. Governor in the House, right? I was going to. Oh, just the gov? Okay. Okay. Can we spend the rules to take um, item number 15 till number 26? Uh, oh, we have Mrs. Ferrante here still. Second it. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Then we have a sign. Um, item 15 through 26, right, Councillor? Yes, it yes. is. Yes. Okay. Are we, um, items 15 through 26, 26. Mr. President, are all <clears throat> petitions offered by uh, Exonet LLC for permission to attach <clears throat> a small cell and teller along with all required equipment and fiber for its operations to an existing utility pole on the right-of-way located on the public way or ways. 
Item 15 is for 205 Russell Street. Item 16 is for 23 Griswold Street. Item 17 is for 91 Garland Street. Item 18 is for 110 Florence Street. Item 19 is for 40 Cabot Street. Item 20 is for 6-8 Windsor Street. Item 21 is for 9 Kenwood Road. Item 22 is for 27 and 31 Dean Street. Item 23 is for 8 and 12 Montrose Street. Item 24 is for 18 Kelvin Street. Item 25 is for 57 Tremont Street. And item 26 is for 49 Montrose Street. We, these we did public hearings correctly the last time, yes. I have uh, if, it, well, it's your sentiment. Do you want to vote up or down or do you want to refer? That's your choice, but I, I have I imagine two speakers before we ones. do any motions. Council McLaughlin and Council Hammond. held the public hearings. So, Mr. President, uh, uh, just, I don't know, Tom Clerk, or if we're waiting for a decision on the other 10 pieces, we should be waiting for a decision on these. these uh, the MOU know. will affect all um, um, petitions from this company. So that's what you're waiting on. Yeah. So, but we have the time to table these for two weeks, correct? Because we're not in the time you have of correct. these. Yeah, you. So you, that I make a motion that we month, table these for two weeks, and uh, we're tabling only. You're gonna postpone them. No, so not table these ones on table. The other ones only fifteen to twenty. Postpone for the next meeting is correct. These ones correct. Yes, because you're gonna wait for the other petitions. Is that what we're doing? So the motion stated, is correct? motion postpone to next meeting. Second. Item seconded. Uh, I don't know if you want to give the courtesy, but Ms. Ferranti was looking to just. Oh, so maybe that's okay, that. Well, make a motion that we before we right. want to withdraw that yeah. for a moment. Seconded. <laughs> you may. Hope we can hold off on that. Yeah, let's let's see if. Is that? Uh, make sure that microphone is on. It's, it's on. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So November twelfth is not a problem. Um, and just for uh, clarification, because on September 23rd, there was a lot of questions and we kind of had to kind of reset and kind of educate for 10-7, that actually told the 60 days. Okay. So that's why the actually the 60 day period for that group of applications is 11-12. Okay, perfect. So just for clarification. Okay. So perfect then. Thank you. Mr. President. Councilman um, McLaughlin. Uh, I make a motion that we table items uh, I make a motion that we table items 15 through 25, excuse, excuse me, 26 me. for two weeks. And also, we have any more questions for our guest? Oh, no. Excuse me. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. I love being okay. up here, but thank you. All right. Oh, hold on, hold okay. on, Councilor. We have a question, Councilor Hanlon. One person in charge of the meeting. First Go ahead, Councilor. You know. um, and excuse me, Jim. Through you. You know, we have a lot of these coming up, and I'm sure a lot of them have already been passed, and, you know, prior to your knowledge or, or prior to anyone else, another company, is there any way that you could locate this for us? We have a, we have a city map. It's like two by three, a piece of paper, two feet by three feet. Could you sort of identify, you know, by a dot or a color? Where, where everybody else is? Yeah, or, <laughs> if you know them. No, no so I, my rec but let me make a recommendation. Um, so the the electrical inspector should have a record of everyone that has applied to go on a poll because you need a, uh, an electrical permit. So maybe that would be the best way to kind of get a, I mean, I don't know how everyone's organized there, but that's probably your best resource. I have no idea where everybody is. Well, then how about just yours? Well, well I don't, but we don't have any existing right now. In this, we, don't, we do not have any existing in the city right now. You don't have anything at all? No. I see a lot of them around. I've oh, but looking. they're not ours. <laughs> I see. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Thank no you. problem. All right. All right. Do we have any more questions for our guests? Just one for Ms. Ferranti. Like you spoke, like Council Matuski, then Council McLaughlin. Thank you, Ms. Ferranti. I, I noticed the first group is already, we've discussed it. And this is the second group of, of uh, fixtures. This is another group. Is this the end of your company's? Uh, no, so everybody should have on file, I submitted our network plan for the city, which it would be a total of 41. However, there's about 10 to 15 that we still are working through. But for right now, there's 22 that are before the council. Okay, but 41 will be the, you know, my question is, uh, the polls can only uh, handle so much. I don't know if you've driven around Everett. I'm sure you have. 
Oh, but yes. But there's a lot of devices on our poles now, and, uh, you know, we can only take so much. There's some big device. I know yours is on the smaller side, but we have to be mindful, at least I am. Uh, I see these things going on poles now. If another company comes here with another 41, and another company after that, and another company after that, we have to draw the line. I'm going to draw the line on my vote. Uh, you know, I'm into, uh, you know, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, internet access and so forth is very important, but we have to be mindful that you can only put so much on, on polls here. So the poll feasibility, just for the record, is basically most of the polls are owned by National Grid, and therefore we can't just go on any poll. So if that poll has primary or there's transform, you know, there's certain um, equipment already on a poll, we can't go on the poll. So National Grid does, they, they have their own standards as to when we can go on a poll as well. So you have to get permission from National yes, Grid. Yes, exactly. We and have they to own get a all the polls, don't they? Um, there are most of the polls are owned by National Grid. There's a small amount that are owned by the city. Small amount owned by the city. Okay. Because I can just see this rolling and rolling along here. I am not going to be voting on 50, you know, no offense to you because you've been very uh, forthcoming with the information and that's what I appreciate. People that come with information before the council like you have. But some companies may not do what you've done and extend that you talk to the two people that were in the chamber this evening that were concerned about something in front of their home. So you went the extra mile, but some other companies may not do that. And uh, I'm not so sure I'll be, you know, there was an article in one of the newspapers that, you know, that we're anti, uh, that certain members might be anti-technology, and that's not the case here. These polls are leaning. There's a lot on them. We've discussed this. This is not just new. There's things the size of refi small refrigerators on poles here. And it's, a, it's insulting. I wouldn't want it in front of my house. But needless to say, Ms. Ferranti, you've been professional. And uh, I appreciate I personally appreciate it. But I have to let you know, if you're coming up for another, this is what, 30, these, these two uh, groups? 22. 22. So you're going to ask for 19 more. Right, but we're still working through You're the, working on that. Well, you've been very professional, and I like your style, and uh, your company seems very honest. So, But I just want to let you know, Mr. President, I am not going to be voting on uh, devices on top of polls every week up here. We've got to put a limit on it. And I want to thank you again, Ms. Ferranti. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Counselor. <clears throat> Any more questions for our guest? Counselor Hanlon. Item number... 23, um, you know, it starts off by saying, which they all say, attach a small cell antenna. Uh, item number 23 has two addresses, 8 and 12. Is that, looks like two poles? Oh, no, it's one pole. It's just for sake, it's, we have pole numbers for each pole. So it's just that's the best address to identify that particular <laughs> pole location. Get, get together. Oh, yes, no, it's one pole per address. Okay, then let me ask also then. There's a few of them that way. Item 22. Item 2 says the same thing, except it's 27 and 31. That's a bigger distance. That's still one pole? It's just, again, the best address to describe where the pole is. It's all, each location is one pole. Just want to let you know we read these things. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm on okay, my town Mr. board, Chairman, I understand. Thank you. <laughs> Costa Florio, I think is our last speaker. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Ferranti, I just want to clarify something. When we had the because we've had you up here for so many times, and I really appreciate you coming up here. To do Not all a this. problem. Uh, we had a meeting, uh, a special meeting on this, and you gave us information, all this stuff, plus all the new ones coming up on the other page. <coughs> Is that correct? Yep. Yes, okay, I, we gave you the network plan. 26. So what we're doing basically tonight is, I think all the questions have been answered on this, and we understand the concern, and I also have the same concern of companies coming in. Uh, so we only want to lay this on the table so we can talk to the city solicitor and see what she can put in the language. We have other companies come, they all go into that one box that you had told us about, that one antenna, that you told us that other companies could, you have one antenna and the other companies could. Uh, no, so the, the problem with co-locating on a utility pole 
in contrast to like a big tower, right, where you see everybody. Right. Is that the so although um, the technology may allow for the antenna to um, to be shared, the problem is that the radio boxes do not. So you'd have to have multiple right. boxes. So it wouldn't structurally it, you couldn't do that in that way. Maybe you'd have one to have day. multiple boxes, but not multiple antennas. Correct. Right. And so that doesn't. It's not feasible today. It may be later in the future as technology kind of changes and the equipment changes, but it doesn't work today. Okay, so basically right now we're just waiting for the language that the city solicitor, that's the only reason why we're laying it over, but I believe all our questions have been answered. This is the third time. And in committee. So it yes. was in committee. We had a committee as a whole. It came in front of us also at the meeting, so I believe that everything has been right. answered to the best of my knowledge anyways. So we're only waiting for, for the, the language. For the language, for the mm. city solicitor to tell us if the language is okay or if we want to change any of the language in the agreement but then we vote on it the next time and that's it. There's no need to have any more meetings, uh, any more committee meetings, because this has already been done. Right. So, so Council, right. you know, so if the language is correct from the chair. So 15 through 22. 26. 26, and then. One through 10. One through 10 should all be answered for next week's meeting, right. two weeks correct. from now. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you very, Thank much, you very for your much for your patience. Okay. No, no, not a problem. Any Thank more you. questions? Sure. Are you sure? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. <laughs> Thank you. So, <clears throat> I have. Um, sorry. We have. We have motions for 15 through 26, and then we'll take the other 10. Okay. That's what I have. Yep. We have a motion made, and that was seconded, and we okay. can just. It's a. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um, Mr. President, you can just say I. Item. One through ten off the table. Well, uh, first, we're going to just vote 15 through 26 up or down to refer. Yeah. We haven't. Yeah, okay. so we referred it. No, no we just said, no. Uh, we just made the motion and seconded it. <laughs> then we so had mo 20 The more motion questions. is 15 to 26. Refer it to motion, next meeting. Refer yep. it to next meeting. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Refer it. Next meeting. Now we have to take items one, one through ten, ten. from the table. You take them off the table. Uh, the president. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed from 1 through 10. Thank you very much. You want to postpone items 1 to 10 to our next meeting. Second next motion. motion. Second. All in favor for next meeting? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I have it for next meeting. Perfect. Um, we do have a sign in sheet. Could we uh, just take the uh, three department heads that are in the audience? First would be Mr. Devereaux for item number 32. Spend the rules, take item 32. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? I have 32. 32. Please read 32 on the agenda. Okay, Mr. President, item number 32 is a resolution offered by uh, Michael K. Marchese that the city explain what is the revenue and tax situation for the parking lot across the street from Encore Casino. Gentlemen, just you state your name and your department, please. Uh, B.J. Devereaux, Assessor's Office. Eric Gamis, CFO. Council Marchese. Uh, good evening, everybody. Every, this kind of self-explanatory. I was just trying to figure out what our actual situation is down there. I know we, we uh, allegedly get the revenue from it uh, to a third party for parking down there. And I don't know if there's any indication, any, any way you can tell us what we've received so far, A, eh? and what is the actual taxes that they pay on that property down there? Is it residential? Is it commercial? How many acres is it? And just trying to find out what we're, we're doing down there. Certainly. Um, and I'll let Mr. Devereaux, he's brought all the detailed information on each specific parcel because it does get a little um, confusing. Now, how many, how many acres do we have there total? I, I didn't uh, calculate the, the total acreage. I believe it's a, uh, uh, it would be speculation for me to state, I, but I didn't calculate the acreage. Yep. There's, a pro there's approximately 17 different parcels it, that they assembled down there. Yep. They're currently being taxed as both whatever they were prior to the construction because the construction of the parking lot took place in May. Yep. Uh, they're, they're being taxed currently as they sit for, F, for FY19, they were taxed as they sat on 1118. And for FY20, they'll be taxed as they sat on 1119. Okay, so we're, so we're looking at mostly residential. Is it's, what it's, actually, it's actually a fair, it's a fair mix. It's probably about 50-50. Yep. Uh, for FY19, they paid uh, $517,000 in real estate taxes uh -huh. on the parcels combined. Yep. But we'll be looking at, uh, for FY21, 
Probably uh, possibly consolidating them. I can't consolidate parcels that they, they bought them all in separate LLCs. Yep. Now some they have changed to the same LLC very recently, sure. just before the parking lot opened. But I can't combine parcels for tax purposes if the ownership is different. Okay. Oh, different ownership meaning different LLC. Different LLC is considered different ownership. Ah, good move. Good move by them. <laughs> okay. Um, have we received any uh, funds at all from the parking? You're not talking have, have taxes. We, You're actually talking about revenue. parking revenues. Yes. Yes. Um, so through September, um, our net amount is a little over four hundred thousand um, dollars. It's a fluctuating number, given the fact that the resort it, recently switched yep. and is now providing free parking. Yep. Um, so we still have individuals that either one are not aware that there is free parking in the resort, but also the parking inside the resort is limited. So anytime they hit capacity, the overflow goes into the lot. Uh, is that 400,000 the city's uh, piece or is it uh, being distributed through the vendor we have? No, that's the net amount. That's, that's the, net the amount? city's piece, yes. That's and I can tell you as recently as, uh, as Saturday, um, on Saturday we collected a little over $6,000 in parking fees. Okay, so we first quarter we collected 400,000 the city of Everett. Plus, on top of that, we have the LLCs, which you got $517,000 in taxes, right? Yes. That's what we have so far there. Um, you know, I got a little concerned when I, I wasn't sure what we were actually doing there. I know we were paying a third, a third party to actually run it. And uh, being down there a lot and knowing what the commercial tax rate is down there, you know, 517 is a lot of money. But if it was commercial, it probably be one and a half times that, you know, if it was, right? A little more than that. that, that I'm good with that. I just want to know that uh, we'll get a little bang for a buck out of it, that's all. And this is what, to go on for the next three years there? Yes. The agreement is for three years. Three years? All right, thank you. That's that's great. Thank you for the uh, your information. Anyone hey, else is welcome to... Uh... Thank you, Councillor. I get Councillor Florio, Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Now, the 400000 was, I'm sorry, are you finished, Councillor? No, just, just let me, uh, if, uh, go ahead. excuse I'll, me. I'll go ahead, Councillor. Where, where does this money go? Uh, currently, this money is unrestricted money that comes into the general fund. So this is free cash? What? Well, I, I don't like saying free cash because free cash is the close yep. of the year following um, the, after you complete the budget. But yep. it is one of our revenue sources that is used to um, fund um, operations. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor right, Florio. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman Julio. Now, you said we collected 400,000. That would be the month of obviously June, July, August, and September. Is that correct, four months total? That is correct. Now, we're paying this. Yeah, actually, it, I'll, I'll correct that. It's probably July, August, and September because I don't yeah, think was if there was any June. charging yeah. during the month of June. Right, right. Uh, the other question is, we're paying this third company to collect this money approximately $600,000. Is that co is the correct? Uh, no. Um, it's a not to exceed contract. Um, so when the specs were put together, it was assuming um, Encore wasn't going to make, make any changes to their parking facility and that that lot was to be um, almost fully filled 365 days a year. Right. Um, however, in the terms of the contract, we put in a three-month and six-month review, um, but it's actually something we're doing on a monthly basis. So what we've learned throughout this process is that we don't need the significant staffing levels um, that we had at the very beginning at the opening, and we've consistently worked with the company to pare down their staffing. We actually have another meeting tomorrow um, taking a look at embracing more of their remote services and maybe not manning it during the day, during their slow times, Monday through you know Thursday, um, because the significant amount of the usage now since the changing um, of the parking facilities at Encore is really from late Thursday afternoons through Sunday. Right, so my question was gonna be, I, I kind of figured that out, I've been, I've been watching it, so my question was gonna be is, if the lot is not filled on Monday through Thursday, are we allowed to rent that lot out ourselves, like say for people that want to go to Boston, get on a, on a train to go to work. There are a number of 
potential opportunities that we're looking into right okay. now. Because I would recommend that we look into something like that and gain more revenues. Why not? Why leave an empty parking lot if you don't have to? Because obviously, ENCO has, that's our parking lot. ENCO has nothing to do with it. We can do whatever we want. Is that correct? I, I don't want to give specific legal advice, um, not having read that document in a long time. The city solicitor is here. But what I can tell you is that the mayor um, feels the same way that you do. And we're currently um, looking at potential other possibilities to generate additional revenue when that lot is not in full use. Okay. Well, I, obviously, I'm not going to bring the city solicitor up here, I, but I would like to get a copy of that. Uh, uh, to, to, if you could please. Not, it doesn't have to be right away, but I'd like to look at it and uh, see what the uh, conditions are for that parking lot. Certainly, we do have flexibility. I just don't want to state specifically what No, no, that's what fine. That and I don't expect is. you to give me uh, an answer on the question that I've just asked. Because by right, I'm supposed to give you those questions in writing anyway. So, I, and I haven't done so. So, I appreciate whatever you could have answered. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mr. you, Council. Council McLaughlin and Council Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I was going to ask one of my questions was what Council of the Floor just said. Is there other options to be able to look at it, the slow times and what, how we can generate uh, that parking lot being more uh, usable um, on, the slow, on the slow hours? But that was just answered. My one question, and you guys don't expect you to answer it right now, but the River Green Drive lot down on off of Air Force Road. Could you guys at some point just put together a comparison of some numbers for Air Force for that lot just to show us if it's being utilized or if it's not being utilized in general, BJ? And if you have tonight, great. If not, I, I'm totally. I just have the, the assessments on the parcels. I'm just yeah, yeah, actually yeah, just yeah. wondering about growth, uh, yeah. I mean, um, revenue Usage. growth, um, just to see whether or not it's actually being utilized, if those lots are actually being utilized or not. Um, so at some point, if you guys could just uh, put that together uh, again. Uh, just sure. Just to kind of show whether or not it's actually being utilized or not, just overall, um, would be uh, I'd appreciate it. But uh, again, just seeing if we can find other ways to reven uh, generate revenue through the three years when that lot is not as busy during those uh, slow hours for Encore. I can assure you, we're exploring those options as we speak. Great, and I think it's a benefit to the community, and it might be benefit <laughs> to the residents. I think it's a win-win for everyone if we can figure out a, a reasonable way to open up that lot and get that uh, more usable for l local residents, not a floodgate to Everett, but to local residents that, that can benefit from that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Matuski. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, no, my, uh, I want to thank the gentleman for being here. My questions uh, that I had <coughs> were answered. by Council Rose at the Florio, so I have no further questions. Thank you. Any more questions for our guest? Thank you. Thank you very much. Council Marchese, what's your pleasure with this piece? Uh, yeah, uh, a motion to uh, see a copy of the agreement uh, distributed to all the, the council we'll get that and week. just and lay it over for a week. That's all. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. All the opposed, the ayes have it. Postponed. Yes. Okay. Postponed to get the agreement. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Slattery for uh, item 33. Spend the rules council and take component. item 33. I have a second. Gentlemen and ladies, do I have a second on that? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Please read number 33 on the agenda. Item number 33, Mr. President, <clears throat> is a resolution offered by Councilors uh, Michael McLaughlin and Councilor Fred Capone that the administration provides an update in regards to the vacant house lot on Summer Street and if there are any plans to develop this property. There was a. Well, I, Council Capone. Uh, the uh, assistant city solicitor had responded with a letter, and uh, if I'll ask my, my co sponsor, I'm happy with that if the clerk wants to read it. I but if, read it. if my colleague has any questions, by all means. But Okay, well, we read the response, and if we want to invite our guest up, we can invite our guest up. He's waited patiently up there. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, response from our assistant city solicitor, um, Keith Slattery. Uh, it was uh, asked in agenda item number 33 uh, 
that the administration provide an update in regards to the vacant house lot on Summer Street and if there are any plans to develop this property. In response, the city has obtained title to 97 Summer Street through tax title process for unpaid taxes. The process for title will be perfected in approximately nine months under the procedure. In the interim, the city will be responsible for the maintenance of the property and has coordinated with the Department of Public Works accordingly. The administration will hold a public meeting at the appropriate time to discuss development of the lot and plans to develop that lot will be made in a timely manner thereafter. If you have any additional questions or concerns, you can contact Mr. Slattery. I'm, I'm satisfied with that response. I'll leave it to my co-sponsor if he wants to hear Co-sponsor, Council McLaughlin. Mr. President, thank you. I'm all okay with that response as well. I just would like to ask that we get it cleaned up. I don't know if you've driven past it at all. It's it's a pretty uh, it's pretty un unsightly uh, lot. It's overgrown debris. There's, uh, you know, some of it has died off because you're getting colder weather now. But there was grass growing beyond the fence line. It was it was not uh, please eye pleasing for the neighborhood. So just to see a DPW crew go down there and clean the lot maybe this week would be uh, great for the neighborhood. And then I think the neighborhood is uh, satisfied with waiting for the process to play itself out. However, they, when, you know, Mr. Clerk just read, uh, but just to get it cleaned up for the neighborhood, just to have it a little bit more eye pleasing for the neighborhood. So that would be my only request, but I, I'm good with the response and thank the administration for the response. Um, just to ask for it to be cleaned up. Yeah. Thank you. If there's no so, more questions, what you have to Yeah, on the, a motion, uh, take the response, place on file, but if we could refer the matter to the administration and public works to get the area cleaned up, yeah. that'd be great. Seconded. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. President, I'm sorry. Uh, can we, did we already vote on? Uh, I, I don't, did, did we? Make a motion. It's, just a, it's a resolution, okay. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, um, invite up Assistant City Solicitor Keith Slattery. Second motion. Second. All in favor? Ayes nice have it. Good evening, members of the council. Is this we not working? Working? I, I do have a little bit of uh, additional information since I wrote that response. Um, so there's a, a planned public meeting for November 7th. And that meeting will take all participants from the neighborhood or throughout the city that want to come and comment on the use of the property. Um, the original thoughts for the use of the property were either an open space or affordable housing, so those topics will be discussed at that meeting. Um, to address the maintenance issue, DPW has gone down there about three times this year, and I know this month um, they haven't gotten down there. We have a temporary fence on the property, and I'm working on getting that removed and getting a permanent fence put up. So I think in furthering those efforts, uh, the last bit of maintenance for last month kind of fell by the wayside, but I'll make sure someone gets down there. Oh, okay. and, that, and that's fine. And not to blame our DPW in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Just over the period of the summer, we, a lot of us go into Bucci's, and, and you notice it because you're in that area more often. And it's just, uh, just to, to ask the DPW, which has done a good job, just to go down there and, and maintain and, and, and tidy the place up, especially for the winter months coming, uh, j just to see it uh, cleaned up better than it is, um, would be my only request. Where will that neighborhood meeting take place, Mr. Slattery, on November 7th? Do you know uh, yet? No, I, actually, I don't know. So I'll find out and make sure that everybody does know. We'll publish that meeting and, and make sure it's known to the public. Okay, okay. great. But that is the date. So November 7th. Seventh is the day. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you, Slider, for the information. All right. Take it. Uh, make a motion to excuse with customary thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And then, Mr. President, uh, make a motion that we table this to the November twelfth meeting. No, we, we already uh, had. I, is that what uh, the council component had a different? Uh, oh, oh, that's fine. Okay. Do you want me to change it? <laughs> No, that's all right. I, I was just referring it to the parties for them to, uh, to, to take, take care of. Okay. Take care of your, your issues. Okay. Whatever, the, whatever my colleague wants to do is fine. So it, uh, you wanted to postpone it till the November 12th meeting? Yeah. Is that what we decided? Okay. No problem. Seconded? Yeah, all those in favor. All in favor, post the next meeting? Aye. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Again. <laughs> Again, um, we do have uh, one last piece, but I don't see Mr. Monty here, um, so I, I guess we don't. I think is there, you do you see him? All right, so they're going to go grab Mr. Monty because he might be in the planning board. So um, items 27 and 30. 
All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. 27 to 30 or in? in 30. And 30, yes. Thank you. Um, item number 27, Mr. President, is a resolution offered by Councillor Anthony DePiro that the Department of Planning and Development look into the safety measures at, that could be implemented and take action in the area between Abbott Ave and Freeman Ave as there have been multiple car accidents over the past few months. Item number 30, Mr. President, is a resolution offered by Councillor Anthony DePiro that the Traffic Commission considers placing speed bumps in the Housing Authority property on Russell Street at the request of, <clears throat> excuse me, a request of residents in that neighborhood. Councilor DePiro. Thank you, Mr. President. I spoke to Mr. Monty earlier today and um, we're going to work together on a resolution. He's uh, got some things in mind. He might. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to refer both pieces back to He's sponsor okay. and give them till the end of the year. And if it's an issue, still I'll reintroduce it to the calendar. Thank you. I have a second. Seconded. All in favor? All right. Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you, Councilor. Spend the rules, take item 31. Second. All in favor, to take 31. Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Please read 31 of the agenda, please. <clears throat> item number 31. Mr. President, there's an ordinance offered by Council Michael K. Marchese that the city <laughs> shall use 75% of the revenue that they receive from Encore to put towards taxes. It just wasn't uh, placed on the thing. It has been amended to have everyone's name on it. Um, I'm sorry it wasn't on the agenda. That Move for favorable action and to um, add everybody's name on. No? Yeah, it was already, that was amended the last time. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry that it's not just, on just the not agenda, on but it was correctly done. Second a motion for favorable yeah. action. Second. With the, Call the roll. I didn't hear you, Council. What did you want to do with this piece? Favorable action. So, action. so this was an ordinance that was um, made and amended by Councilor. Marchese to go to the mayor's office correct um, I just I just want you to know that technically that's it, it probably yeah. won't be uh, that's won't fine. be enforceable I yeah just, it, it's I just a sentiment I, right. I know what your intent is I just yeah. want to give you a heads up that no he problem. may have to legally veto it sure it's, yep. it's okay. it, it, not because he wants to yep. because no. he has to <laughs> and he has a chance to work on it and amend it <laughs> I'm, yeah. send it I'm back just, to I'm us I'm just letting you know <laughs> um, so, uh, so the motion was favorable action as amended for ordainment, correct? Correct. Yes. And um, Council Capone. Yes. Council De Florio. Yes. Council De Piero. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council yes. McKinnon. Council yes. McLaughlin. Councilor, excuse me, Simonelli. Yes. And President Ellison. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays. You have so ordained the ordinance. <clears throat> um, which one? Looking, it's that. Can we? So, um, we number eleven on the agenda, please. Yes. Um, and I did say the day and the, okay. Item number 11, uh, Mr. President, is ordin ordinance offered by Council Richard J. Delisolo, Jr. as president that the City Council hereby amends the existing short-term rental ordinance um, with the piece that's before you. Um, just so you know, this is the piece that uh, you had requested for us to work on. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Council Capone. Uh, Council right. McLaughlin had asked us and Council Capone uh, because of the issues that we had uh, taken up. This has been worked on for quite some time since that, um, that, the, that happening about a month ago. Um, all the city's attorneys, outside counsel, uh, the DPW director, the uh, planning director, everyone has had, their, had a, a chance to review this, uh, the mayor, um, and we believe this is the most appropriate course of action. Uh, we're not asking you necessarily to vote on it tonight. I would be gladly tell you to review it for another um, meeting to give you some time because we also have to do zoning anyway. They have to coincide. So it's not like uh, there's an immediate rush, but we want to get it done before the end of the year, but, you know, because we are in a two month time crunch, but you have a little time. So I just wanted to give you all that information and tell you that there's been a lot of hands that reviewed it. Um, we feel that it's, it's written very well and really complements what everyone had asked. But if there are any changes, obviously, to please um, send them to me or Mr. Well, Slattery. would you like this? Um, a motion would be to, um, 
Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah, just a question. Council Hanlon. <clears throat> Am I to uh, understand that this on my desk is the final? The final this is the, the piece that came out of our work over the last it's month. Perfect. It's perfect now. Uh, well, perfect, uh, well, you know, it's as perfect <laughs> as we think it is. Yes, so this I, has got I think it's written very well. But. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I, I don't take credit. That there was a lot of a lot of people that helped on this. This is not just me. Council, Council well, McLaughlin. Yeah, this is short-term President. rentals. This is a fix to what we had. You know, some changes to what we had past, in past. My question to the Thank city. You. I. This is the, the Airbnb is a corporate name. Short-term rental refers to Airbnb. All right, Council McLaughlin has the floor right now. I'm Thanks, sorry, President. Council. Mr. Mr. President, uh, for you to the clerk, Mr. Clerk, can we uh, change any language in this ordinance? Oh, yeah, this is not and a... And if we, if we should, we should end the discussion and just send it to the committee, right, and legislative... You can send it there, but if, if it's just a few minor changes, I, I, would, I would ask it. If it's something simple, I would send it, you know, through, through me, and uh, I can work with our legal counsel to draft it, but if you want to send but it... But I think we should send it to the committee to have one shot to look at it yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to understand the, the changes that have been amended. You can do that. Yeah, of course. I think that's the most appropriate place to go with this is to refer this yeah, to legislative don't. affairs. Right. We just want to make sure we're going to have a legislative affairs committee yeah. in the recent couple of weeks. That's all. To make sure it moves. If, if I may. Right, Council Capone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. You President. Council McLaughlin? Oh, I have Council right. Florio. Oh, I'm sorry. Then Council Thank Capone. <laughs> Why can't we just call to make the changes? He can bring it in front of us two weeks from now instead of it going to committee, okay? With the changes. Because, right, I haven't had a chance to see all this. Yeah, no, I, I, and to me, I think the landlord needs to live in the apartment or they need to get a manager. So I don't know if that's in it, here. It, it is in there. Both, so if both that's options. In there, I'm fine with it because we've really got to become strict on these things because they're becoming party houses. So to me, if we have any questions, but for the next two weeks, let's bring it to the uh, city clerk, have them change it, and then when it comes in front of us in two weeks, if we have it, more questions, we can send it to committee. But let's have a chance to look at it, and we can make the changes accordingly. You send it to committee, it comes back on the floor, and it keeps going back and forth. So there's no reason why we can't look at this, and if we have any changes, call the city clerk, have them make the changes, and bring it in front of us in two weeks. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. Chairman. I get, hold, hold on. I got Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. And although I usually agree that uh, items should go to the committee, this was in committee. Uh, we asked uh, the clerk and our solicitor to do some work on it. They have done a lot of work. Given the, the time frame we're doing, we want to try to get this in before our session ends. Uh, what I would recommend is that we, we postpone it to our next meeting. Rather than trying to put it in the committee and have it come out of the committee, uh, I, from items that we have on the agenda, items that we have, in that committee, there's quite a bit already happening in legislative affairs. So I would ask that we postpone it to our next meeting, have each of the members take a look at this, yeah. and if there's anything we need to discuss, we can discuss it at the next meeting. Second motion. Thank you. I get, Council Hand, did you want to speak? No, no I, just, I was, uh, what was, that was my motion. Okay. I have Council McLaughlin, did you want to speak? No. Thank you. All right, so. There's motion made and seconded to postpone. Motion made, second to postpone. All in favor? For next meeting. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. So moved. Item 12. Please read 12 on the agenda. Item 12, uh, Mr. President, is a order offered by Council Richard J. Delasola, Jr., <coughs> President, that the Everett City Council hereby approves the reduction in the school department budget by $1,250,868, as well as the reduction in the school budget by transferring an additional 650000 to the city's health insurance account and an additional $99,132 into the city's Medicare account. I'm going to get you a total. I'm, I would say, um, yeah, I'd be safe just because I've never seen a return mid-year like this. So I just, exactly. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion. I get, I get, I get Council McLaughlin. Oh, sorry. And then Council Capone. You need 13. Yeah, I would do that first if we could. Seconded. All in favor, suspend rule 13. Ayes have it. Mr. President. Can Council McLaughlin. Can you make a motion and we invite up uh, Eric Demas, uh, CFO? Seconded. All in favor. Ayes have it. Eric Demas, still CFO. 
Council McLaughlin. <laughs> Glad to hear you're still the CFO. <laughs> I didn't know there was a change coming. Um, Mr. Davis, uh, can you just quickly tell us um, what this what this is from? Reduction in mid years, the return of the funding that they they brought. Sure. Well, there's actually two components of the order that's in front of you. Um, the 1.2 million um, reflects additional state aid that the city was awarded on behalf of the schools after the budget process had concluded. Um, as you're aware, uh, the mayor and city council voted to appropriate the full amount of the appropriation that the school department and school committee had requested. Um, what the mayor and city council did was fully fund everything that they were looking to do um, with the understanding that if any additional funds came in um, that we would be reducing their appropriations by that amount because their budget was in fact fully funded and fully staffed at the time. In addition to that, um, as part of that overall appropriation, which was roughly 6.5 million above net school spending, there was a component of health insurance and other employee benefits that were um, a component of that piece. Now, if uh, the total appropriation as presented passed, that meant um, that the city would be experiencing those additional um, employee benefit costs because it included a whole number of other provisions. So in working with the school department, we thought we would include that piece in the requested funding so that it was um, a total package and that if it was approved, we would come after the fact and just do a transfer from the school department budget to the employee benefits line. Um, it just made sense at the time to keep everything together and to reflect what the total cost was. Um, it made sense to the school administration. It made sense to um, us at City Hall. And as such, um, because you fully funded it, now we're here to make those um, adjustments to the appropriations. Mr. Demas, my only question is, so the health insurance portion of it, I, I get, absolutely. Yep. The 1.2 million, though, is extra additional Chapter 70 funding that the Senator and the Representative got for the City of Everett, is that correct? Yes. So when the budget was put together, um, there were, um, as the Senator um, has told you tonight, um, there's never been any guarantees as to what the legislature was or wasn't going to do. Um, so in the spirit of collabor collaboration and not coming in for supplemental appropriations after the fact, like we went through for the past couple of years, um, the directive to the school department and the school committee was put together exactly what you think that you need regardless of whether or not the state's going to step in um, and address some of the um, lack of funding issues that we've been facing. So that's exactly what the, the school administration presented to, um, actually they presented it to School Finance Review Commission um, and they presented it to the School Committee Finance Committee, which was then presented to the full school committee budget, uh, uh, full school committee in which they voted. The only problem that the only problem is if it's chapter 70 funding it does not by law have to go to the schools it's not actually chapter 70 funding it's it's a different separate unrestricted grant okay. school grant okay and, and we're actually still even with the 1.2 million dollar reduction we're still far above sure. the minimum chapter 70 required spending okay my only question, okay, that's fine, we'll talk about this later. But what the news that the Senator gave tonight, how does that reflect our numbers in the, in the, future, in the future years? Well, if and we can talk about that at another time. I was going to say, if the Senator's not going to give you numbers, I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> however, I just can tell general, you it's extremely positive. Just in general ter terms, which is that our reduction to the schools becomes drastically lower, if not almost next to nothing at that point. I'm going to wait till the final numbers come out and the final plan is presented. Okay. Okay. That's right. Thank you. Council Capone and Council Hanlon. Favorable action. Oh, Council Hanlon. Second. Hold on, everybody. Hold, if you'd like to say to go home. Yeah. Hold Thank on. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm giving a hypothetical question. Our budget that we approved in June was $100 million. That's a hypothetical. Sure. Problem. Okay. This is a real figure, though. We've gotten back $2 million from the state. Now, this has to come off of that $100 million. So my question is, where 
does the $2 million go? So we're actually not reducing the budget by $2 million. You're reducing the budget by a million two. The other 749000 is coming out of the school budget and going into where it's actually being spent, which was employee benefits. The reason why we wanted to do it now before we set the tax rate is because by city council taking favorable action on this position, we're going to reduce the amount that we actually have to raise in the tax levy this year. So we report that to the state just as we report it um, for um, an appropriation to increase the budget. This is one of the rare times we're going to be reporting an appropriation to decrease the budget. Okay. So we haven't really collected on this amount. We have not. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any more questions for our guest? Thank you. Thank you. Fair action. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. No. Oh, it's no. a roll call vote. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. That'll be a roll call vote. Clerk? Yeah. Council Capone. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiero. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. President Della Sola. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays. You have so passed the order. Can we please suspend the rules and take item number 28? All in the, all the favor to take 28. I have it. Item 28, Mr. President, is an uh, order offered by Council Richard J. Delasola, Jr. as President, that the Everett City Council hereby approves the addition of a new subsection to the Administrative Code, Section 3, Multiple mem Member Bodies, R, Food Policy Council. Um, on your desk, there is a large packet. Uh, some of it, I think, was emailed, but we also <laughs> have it on your desk. That's, this is from Ms. Uh, Webby um, uh, Haidar, um, who presented uh, two weeks ago also. Fable action on the order. On the piece? Council Capone? I'm sure motion. that there's nothing wrong with it, uh, but uh, it's 102 pages <laughs> that I just got tonight. <laughs> and I'm sure I'll be voting in favor of the next meeting, but I'd be asking that we postpone it to our next meeting to take a look at it. Uh, Seconded? Yeah, All in yeah. favor, postpone the next meeting? Aye. Aye. Yep. Ayes have it. Look, you go back to regular business to number, if I'm correct, 13. Um, yes, Mr. President, I believe you are correct. Item 13 is a um, petition offered by Council Richard J. Dallasola, Jr. as President, that the Everett City Council hereby approves a new livery license for the f for first Everett Ultimate Community Transportation Alliance on 15 Highland Ave. Council DePiro. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Sure President. Uh, my you. questions are for the clerk. Is this the first time we're seeing this, or is it coming out of committee? No, this is the first time, but I'm, I'm not sure why it's on the agenda. If you can give me one moment to... Yep, take your time. Oh, I think the gentleman's in the audience that is here oh. for the petition. Um, you want to invite him up? If I, if I may, I'd like to invite yeah, I, the petitioner I, I, just I, to ask him a couple of brief questions. Mine. Peace, I'm just trying to remember why he... Yeah, I'm not... I'm not Anyone that under two livery licenses usually doesn't go on the agenda, so I'm just trying to review this. Sorry. Uh, I think the assistant took this in. Good evening, sir. If you could Good just if you want, introduce yourself. You want to just state, state your name and... My name is Joseph Vincent. So I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say we're, we're all set with this uh, because under our ordinances, I am the licensing authority for two and less vehicles. Yes. And you are for more than that, or commercial. This is in a residential area, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, I think this was accidentally placed on the agenda. Okay. Um, yeah, that's okay. Um, and it has all the sign-offs. So I'm going to be handling this in-house, unless how you have any questions. are we looking Two at? Two vehicles. So, okay, I thought this was a, a large amount. I did, if I did also. Case, if that's was the on case, the agenda. I don't have any questions for you. I apologize. Thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, that is, have, uh, I'll take the blame for that one. Councilor Matuski. Thank you. Uh, how many of uh, this question is to the city clerk? How many people have come up for a livery license? It's a good question. Um, since we passed this ordinance, um, we have a fair amount of home-based livery um, in the dozens. Uh, the exact number I can't tell you off the top of my head, but I'd say between right, 24 and 36. Okay, is a I thought fair, we were going to get an estimate. update like at the end of the year. Is yeah, that yeah, what? yeah. I'll, I'll be doing. I'd like counselor. It's still new. So you know, Cost, I'm, I'm still. Councilman Matuski has the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Yes, I have no question. I want to wish you the best of luck, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. You have two limousine type of yes. vehicles? Yes, sir. And uh, you'll be operating. You keep them in your own yard, do you? Yes. In your own property? Yes. Not on the street? No, no, on the street. Oh, good. Good luck. I hope you're a good driver. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> but anyway, uh, my question to the clerk. Uh, thank you, sir. Mr. Vincent. Um, so you will update us on, you know, because... Yeah, yeah, yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on that. Just so you know, I have a new system that uh, has been... Um, will be implemented in November for tracking. Right. But the old ones kind of... You, you said you were going to do I that. I told you I'm trying to work on that. And so are that, they required to keep their vehicle on... On premises. On their own property, not yeah. on the street. They, not on the street. They realize that, And I right? believe he's actually going to be parking one of them out of the city also, so oh, they well, really won't affect Mr. us. Mr. Vincent's all set. And we wish you the best of luck, sir. But uh, So that's a requirement, that it, they park it the in home, their own property. Home occupant permit requires that. Oh, okay. Not even this specific ordinance. We have multiple ordinances that I have to... Right. Yeah, well, you're working on that as we yes, speak. Sir. I know that. So Absolutely. I want to thank you, Mr. Clerk, and uh, I just wanted to get an update. So at the end of the year, is that when that comes in? On who we issued these to? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. No problem, Counselor. Yeah, no, no action necessary. Seconded. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Or is it still... Um, I'll check. We're all set with 13. Yep. If you can read 14 when you are ready. Uh, I don't number 14 is that uh, Mr. Uh, President has a petition that the Abbott City Council hereby approves a new motor vehicle deal license for Boston Motors USA at 4547 Mystic Street. Please note that by new, this means it's a new person, not a new, uh, it is an existing license but it's just a new person taking over the old the former license. This is um, Mr. Vigorito's property, uh, one of it, one of his properties, and he is just leasing to a new tenant. The old tenant is left, and he'll be uh, leasing to a new tenant. Yeah, so wanna, that's what we mean person. by new. It's an existing license, though. Excuse me. Councilor Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, is this true, you, Mr. President, to the clerk? Is this the gentleman that was having issues? No, nope, this is across the street. Mr. Vigorito owns multiple properties on that street. Oh, the it does, one, yeah. It's the opposite, the opposite side of the street. Same, same street, but opposite side. Yeah, yeah. But this ultimately goes to committee anyway. Oh, yes, well, because yeah. it's a new person, uh, Mr. Capone, and the committee involved, always right. like to but, but You know, my them. way of thinking is, here we are. We've got the $2.6 billion casino. And, you know, some of these businesses were very good. I knew all the, all the auto body shop people, and most of them were very nice people. But my way of thinking is, you know, um, I know this is an existing license, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to vote for any new licenses or anything in that area to do with the kind of businesses that were kind of destructive in that neighborhood. We have a, a new opportunity, a new horizon in that area, <laughs> you know, and uh, it's a three-year plan on the parking, parking lot issue, you know, uh, as far as I know. And there's going to be entertainment value there. There's going to be maybe a hotel, a movie theater, uh, you know, things that people can enjoy. Not an auto body shop or a motor, dealer. A mo a motor vehicle repair shop. So whether the committee votes to favor on it or not, I am not voting for anything like that. I put up with it for a long time representing that neighborhood. I am done with it. You know, there's a few left that are a good businessman, and uh, you know, I wish them luck. But anything in that area to do with repair shops, I'm not voting for. I'm all done with it down there. It's just not the right thing to do, and I hope my, I, you know, some of my colleagues agree. But uh, the end is over for these type of businesses, and they should really, really. The, now I know that the casino offered to buy that property. Or at least that's what I was told. I don't know that for sure. And it was, they were offered millions and millions for it, and the man decided not to sell it. That's his, his uh, prerogative. But my prerogative is a councilman. I'm all done with these businesses down there. He didn't sell it. That's his tough luck. 
There's a few other people that didn't sell their property and wishing they did now. But that's another story. I am not voting for any of those types of businesses near the casino. We have a new thing happening, the Exxon, uh, the Edison building. Somebody told me there's going to be a hotel, a high rise right over the water, down the road. So we've got to look at the future here. So whether uh, it's favorable coming out of committee or not, I'm not voting for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Was it a uh, motion to refer to? Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor. Councilor Florio. Uh, yeah, I'm going to refer it, but I just I want to clear something here. This is a new owner, not a new license. Right. Just okay. say no. New zoning so, wouldn't and, allow uh, uh, this I business. I agree with there. it going to committee because we need to meet all these new owners that come to the city. We mm -hmm. want to know who they are, and we want to tell them what rules they have to follow. Yeah. All right. So because the license already exists, we don't have a choice. When the license comes back up again, then we can renew it or not renew it. Is that correct? I just want to make sure I'm straight. Um, yeah, yeah. So this, you know, it's, a, it's renewal. It's a, it's, a, it's a new person, not a, re, you know. Not a license not renewal. Not a brand a new, new license. license. But uh, either way, that I would, wouldn't be I would refer to, to that committee district. because we want to meet all the new people coming to the city. Correct. Right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, I think we're on 29. Yes, we are. I thought there was see. No, we both missed it. I missed it, too. Yes, that's what I said. Okay. So, um, and there was two options. Um, Mr. President, um, item number 29 is an ordinance offered by Council Richard J. Delisola, Jr. as president that the Everett City Council hereby approves a small cell, small wireless facility ordinance. This, again, is something that um, if um, you remember on Friday, I, I was in the office working with Mr. Latanzi, finalizing this ordinance. Uh, myself and Ms. Mejia and outside counsel uh, worked on this during the week, and outside counsel and Ms. Mejia originally drafted this ordinance. It all coincides with all the small cell wireless facilities that are coming in. It, um, it encompasses FCC rules. It puts in some of our own um, requirements on... Uh, something, some of the work that uh, Council Capone and I had worked on in, in policy in the past. It puts yearly fees in that are all allowed by FCC rules at the limit. So um, it, it's something that I believe is, is needed. It's very important. And uh, yeah, all copies have been emailed and they're on your desk. Um, I'm not saying that, again, you don't have to vote on it. I'll, if you don't have it, I'll, I might have omitted it on yours. I'm sorry. But I have extras. Um, um, I would say, you know, look at it and maybe postpone it for the, till the next meeting so you have some time to review. And I'll make sure, if, and if any of you don't have it, I'll give it to you. I will make sure you have it. Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Um, Clerk, we read number 35, I believe. Yes. And number 35 on the new business. We did 30. 30 was and number done, 35 yes. on the new business, Mr. President, is a resolution offered by Council Wayne A. Matsuski that the Encore Transportation Department address the complaints of area residents on Winthrop Street in regards to speeding by the Encore shuttle on that street. Council Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you know, I haven't really received any complaints on the casino uh, since it opened. But... Um, on this particular street, the Encore limousine buses, or whatever you call them, have been speeding. I talked to two women at the post office that live on that street. They were going to the post. And they said, well, geez, it's just, you know, the whole street's in an uproar over it. And uh, furthermore, uh, Mr. President, I know that Mr. Uh, DeSalvo is no longer there. Correct. And Mr. Taco is no longer there. Who do we speak with from now on? Has anybody here know? I mean, I know that I've been cut out a little bit of the equation here, and that's okay with me. I'm not really a gambler anyway, but to tell you the truth, I want to know who the new man is in charge, and I think you as the president should kind of uh, incorporate some kind of a, a meeting. It doesn't have, you know, you could put a couple of bottles of water out or something, you know. <laughs> But I want to know who's in charge here, okay? This, this issue, to me, it's, 
This was a residential street. It's a nice neighborhood, Winthrop Street. It's between Main Street and Norwood Street, and it is very heavily traveled, and a lot of pedestrians. And these buses, whoever's riding this route, is not such a good driver. Are you speeding? So I, I want to refer this to Encore Transportation Department. I guess, uh, what, what is the new president of Boston Encore? Uh, what I'll do, Council, I'll get, I'll talk to the clerk before we leave. There is one. And tomorrow we'll email yeah. the name and the cell number of the, uh, the gentleman in charge that took over for Bob Lazar. All right, but I want this on the permanent record. You know, I, I'm not a, see, I, if they had that hotline that I was talking about, remember a few months back, but there's been no issues with the casino that I could see. This is a small item. We want them to either reroute and eliminate Winthrop Street from the equation yeah. or at least let them slow down because they're going up the street and it's, it's uh, upsetting the neighborhood. It's something new to the city, you know, and uh, these people are right. If something was happening on my street that never occurred before, I'd want to do something about it that was not uh, beneficial, you know? <clears throat> That's a possibility, Council. But anyway, needless to say, there's a concern about speeding on Winthrop Street from the Encore limousine bus. Thank you. So I want it referred to them. And maybe they can let the drivers at least slow down or maybe reroute it. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow I'll have the uh, name and the cell numbers of uh, in the who the department here, what they do. Email to us tomorrow. All the councils. Council McLaughlin. Mr. President, thank you, Mr. President. I totally echo the comments of Council Matuski. Uh, but that Winthrop Street's not the only one. Prescott Street has been become a speedway for this company. There is several other streets that are cutting down to get into the Prescott Street extension. So I contacted the bus owners uh, themselves. But it's not Encore that owns the buses. It's a DVL or it's DVP or company. something. They're on uh, Second Street. They're located on Second Street. And I talked to the president of their company, and he assured me that he would work on trying to reroute some some streets that are not feasible. Councilor DePiro just said something off the record that was very useful. Try to use one-way streets because when you have two ways in these buses, they're now trying to merge into these traffic. Some streets down off of Board 6 have become really uh, a nightmare, um, and they're speeding. I mean, these buses are driving fast. So I talked to the president of this bus company. I can't think of the bus company off the top of my head, but he did show me that he would work with his drivers. But to be honest, I haven't seen much change, to be honest with you. So I was going to go circle back with him and say, what did we change, and show me the plan. Uh, that being said, um, I believe the new community liaison for Encore is Jackie Crum, is, is, the, is the individual that took over for John Taco, is, is Jackie Crum, who has been around from day one. Um, she, she's been to many of our meetings, and I think most of us know Jackie Crum. She's the new community liaison. Um, but that being said, I think that company down on 2nd Street, we need to talk with them and, and tell them that we're serious about slowing their buses down and you know, traveling accordingly on our streets because pedestrian safety is first priority. And Councilman Tuski is 100% right on the request for Winthrop Street and several other streets down off of Main Street going towards Prescott Street extension that I've heard of. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a point of information, uh, these vehicles that are traveling on Winthrop Street is only temporary. The reason it's temporary is because Forest Ave is completely closed off. That's their route, Forest Ave. And so as soon as that road is opened up again, the utility company finished their work, um, they'll go back onto Forest Ave. However, any time that they change their route to go, even if it's temporary, they should notify the residents, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> and um, I'm you know. Thank you, Council. Yeah, so we should know, they should notify the residents. So therefore, we should make a motion that the company uh, so notify any resident on any street in which there's new traffic temporarily or even, you know, full-time traffic that they should be notified and then to get back to us or to get back to the, the bus company or whoever. But they should be notified. So if they were notified, the resident would never have been complaining, you know. It's Because okay. you know, Council also with the winter coming, with the snow banks and the cars being squeezed out, it's just going to get yeah. worse. Yeah. Well, we, haven't like the, we haven't experienced it yet. Think? So we're going to uh, experience it very soon. Just to um, <coughs> follow Councilman up, uh, uh, Councilman Hanlon and Councilman McLaughlin bring up good points. I'd also like to add Prescott Street. Thank you to this piece. 
and as Councilman Hanlon stated, they should notify now whether or not the name says Encore on the bus, whether or not it's another company, they're responsible, that casino, for this issue, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. And I haven't had any complaints, so what I'm saying is that they've got to tell all their drivers to slow down. And, you know, these are residential streets. They're not made for buses like this here. And it's something new, and it, it, it kind of aggravates people. So I want to thank my colleague, Mr. Hanlon, and Mr. McLaughlin, and uh, refer this to whoever's in charge of the transportation over there. Thank you. Second of that motion. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. Press card. Clerk, could you read number 36 on the agenda? Mr. Uh, President, uh, item 36 is a resolution offered by Councilor Fred Capone that is honor the mayor and the community development um, department explain in detail the work being conducted at Winter Park, the reasons why, and the projected duration and cost of the project. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there's a lot going on over there at Werner Park. There is. And I don't think a day goes by where I don't get a phone call or someone stops me and asks, what's going on, what are they doing there, how long is it going to be? Because the fences are up all over the perimeter of the property, and um, uh, folks are getting off of buses, and they've explained to me that it's not safe and they can't walk around the perimeter of the place. So uh, what I'd like to do is... Uh, refer this to the mayor and to community development uh, for a response at the next meeting with those items. Explain in detail the work that's being conducted, the reasons why for each, the projected duration, and an itemized cost of the project. Uh, I'd be looking for a response at our next meeting if possible. Second. If there's no more questions, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Read number 37 on the agenda when you are ready. <clears throat> Item 37, Mr. President, is a um, order offered by Councilor Anthony Perro that the Committee on Legislative Affairs and Elections convene an executive session in order to review a complaint filed against Councilor McLaughlin, invited the sponsors, Councilor McLaughlin, City Solicitor, complainant, and any other witnesses or parties to the City Council Committee uh, they may <coughs> deem necessary. Uh, I do um, just recommend that when you refer it, that uh, you refer it that the committee goes into executive session, and I will work on that with uh, Councilor Capone. Council of Perro. Legislative Affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as my colleagues know, we received a complaint, and everyone has the right to be heard. Um, if we don't police ourselves, who will? Um, with that, just want the process to play out, and I refer it to Legislative Affairs for an executive session. Oh, okay. Second motion. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Read number 38 on the agenda, please. Yes. <clears throat> Um, item 38 is a, uh, Mr. President, it should say, uh, it's an order offered by Councilor Richard uh, J. Delso, Jr., that the Everett City Council hereby establishes a citywide parking benefits district to be known as the Everett Parking Benefits District under the management of the mayor for which parking revenues collected therein may be reserved for use in such districts for purposes listed in General Law, Mass General Law, Chapter 40, subsection 22A. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Is, is there anyone here to explain exactly what we're looking to do? I don't see anybody. No, it's no, new man. business, so we, okay. we, they usually okay. wait for you to, for the next meeting, okay. or um, we can discuss what, it. What I'd like to do is postpone it to our next meeting, and if someone from the administration could come to explain exactly yep. why we do this, the benefits, uh, any, uh, any drawbacks, and that way we can vote on it then. Mr. Chairman? Councilor Hamlin. Yeah, yeah. It looked like somebody has this already sewed up and everything to do something. So I would like to have some sort of a an advanced uh, a package that describes exactly what they're doing before we get to the next meeting. Uh, it sounds very interesting, but I'm not too sure about it. So I'd like to have a package presented to us, all the councils. Package counselors. for next that meeting? That explains that. Before next meeting. Second it. All in favor of that motion? Councilor Dep I'm in favor of all the motion, but did we pass a rule that on new business the sponsor was going to speak and then it would go to the committee? 
No, it doesn't automatically get referred to a committee. It goes either postponed, referred a to a committee. Postponed or goes to a committee. So that's but why the sponsor this being, of the piece. Will right, but speak. The, under these ones, uh, the the sponsor is as president. He's the president. So, so what this is like oh, one's a okay. company We're on administration. That's why it's a little bit different. Okay, I just so right. technically the, the president's the spot the sponsor, but right. you're not going to speak on but it's it. It's really not the sponsor. It's it's coming from the mayor's that's office. Right. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. One second. Sorry. Sorry, um, item number 39, and uh, the final piece um, is a ordinance offered by Council Richard J. Dallasola, Jr. as president. In accordance with the provisions of Section 12 of the Zoning Ordinances of the City of Everett, the City Council hereby amends the Zoning Ordinance as follows, adding new section 34, short-term rentals. This has to be re uh, referred directly to planning, but this coincides with our other ordinance so that we make sure that the zoning is compliant with our ordinance. To refer to planning, and they'll, they'll hopefully return it back to us soon. So moved. Second. second. Yeah, can I get a second on that? Second. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Before we adjourn, we have uh, a presentation. But before the presentation, I'd like to uh, mention Thursday night from 3 to 6, we're having a Halloween, let's call it a bash, down uh, Rivers, Rivers Edge. About three to six to be events for children to come down um, as a council will have a stand down there passing out cotton candy and popcorn. Could you say that was at the River Green? Yes. Yeah, so just a note, I don't know if it's been decided officially, but it may be raining and it may be moved to Everett High School. So just, uh, I think the decision will be made sometime tomorrow. So we'll make sure that Councilor, um, I mean, uh, Mr. Mangan or myself informs uh, all of you, but I, it looks like it may be po uh, moved indoor. I just want to give you a heads up on that. It, we'll know for sure tomorrow, I believe. Okay. You're welcome. Before we adjourn, Council DePero. Thank you, Mr. President, for indulging me. I just want to recognize one of our own who's been doing a great service for the children in this community for decades. Um, every year around this time, uh, he dedicates many weeks and months into planning this. And uh, Councilor Matuski, I want to congratulate you for holding your 40th Children's Safe Halloween Party this year. So come on up. This citation is from all of us here, the entire city council. 40 years already, huh? <laughs> Councilor, come on up here. Congratulations. So I know you're a pro at giving these out, so you have it memorized. But be it hereby known to all that the Everett City Council, in his honor, the mayor, offer their sincerest congratulations to Councilor Wayne Matuski in recognition of providing the children of Everett with a safe and fun Halloween party for the past 40 years. The entire city government extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion, and I hope you continue doing this for many more years to come. Congratulations. Can't you like to say a few words? Thank you, Mr. President. You know, this is a big surprise to me. I'll be quick. But, you know, time really does fly. You know, you hear that statement. And I was doing the, uh, the flyer over for this party, and I said, I wrote the word 40. I said, are you kidding me? But time does fly. And, you know, yesterday was the party. We had a great crowd, and it was pouring rain out. And I was a little worried that the children weren't going to come with their parents, and it was a new location at the Shavo Club. But the Shavo Club, which I happen to be a member of, gave us the royal treatment, and I was so happy to have my colleague, uh, Anthony DePiro, helping out with the, the prizes and serving some of the cake. You know, and it, I couldn't have done, I, could, I couldn't do this. Over the years, we used to get four or 500 kids, and that was quite a feat. When I was done with that, I was ready to go in a padded cell. But I'll tell you, I've been through musicians, the great Sabi, the great Grissini, clowns, Santa Claus, and we've had a lot of fun with it, but the group that I hire now, the Maxi Doodle Show, uh, they start the show, the kids are mesmerized by them for an hour and a half. They, the kids are just doing everything, doing a, a costume parade. And, and I want to thank you, Councilman DePiro. It was very nice of you to well, think of me. Oh, thank the membership. Thank you. Well, you guys know how to keep a secret. Councilman, <laughs> unbelievable. But uh, 
you know, uh, it's normally held at the Silver Fox, and about 10 or 15 people said, we went to the Silver Fox, there's a wedding going on. But I changed the location, of course, you know. And I want to thank Mr. Messina at the Fox. We've had it everywhere, the Elks Club, the Conley Center one year, uh, the Park Theater. Now it's showing my age here. The Park Theater, right? Mike Marchese used to go there when he was a kid. Remember the dishes? Yeah. But anyway, it's a pleasure to, you know, who knows what the future brings, but uh, I want to thank the people that have helped me with this occasion. And a lot of them are gone now, but I want to thank you very much, Councilman DePiro, and the membership, and happy Halloween, and I hope everybody's safe on Halloween. Before we adjourn, I think this is uh, the last chance uh, as uh, city clerk and um, uh, head of the elections division. I just want to remind everyone that November 5th is election day. Polls open at 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. Um, I just want to remind everyone, I know we've done some advertisement, but I want to reiterate that, you know, uh, you get out and make sure you vote for whatever your candidate is, but it's, 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 our, it's our right to, to vote, and I, ho I hope everybody um, expresses themselves and makes sure they get out to vote. 7 a.m., 8 p.m. on November, Tuesday, November 5th. Thank you. Not, 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 to belabor, not to belabor it, I want to wish all my colleagues, all the candidates in this year's race, good luck. Same here. Everybody, good luck on November 5th. Motion to adjourn? Seconded? Ayes have it.